Hello friends, testing, testing, one, two, three. Ready to get going. Hello, abnormal dark serpent. <laughs> Good to have you here. Hello, my name's Dan. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I left my clapper downtown. What are we gonna do? What, oh, what are we going to do? What's the world coming to? Also, I still don't have my in-ear monitors, as you can see, so I'm shooting a little bit blind there we go so i have a delayed monitor there how's that that for a nice shot close-up shot of my mouth <laughs> my broadcasts are just full of surprises all right here i am again sitting in the calm and comfort <laughs> of my of my uh studio to tackle day two okay enough of seeing my face let's get to let's get down to business point you at my palette gunner is also here good to have you here gunner davidson davidson good to have you guys here or gals whichever it is <laughs> uh, here's the image that i am i'm doing a painting of this saint david school in downtown raleigh um, evidently doing this for one of the young men who's graduating from the school in a couple weeks uh, commissioned by his mother and or grandmother and yesterday I didn't have much time but I got this much done this is the kind of work that certainly I expect to get done in one afternoon but when you have interruptions to your interruptions that doesn't always happen but I decided to take advantage of the fact that this is all nice and dry to do a trick so as you can see here I've put masking tape tape down nice masking tape and I have here Matt mr. magic mr. clean magic eraser let's get it right mr. clean magic eraser and I learned this trick from my good friend David David stickle and if you don't know my friend David Stickle, you just don't know what you're missing. He is a world famous watercolor painter, lives right here in the triangle. Look at that, isn't that nice? Isn't that sweet? So I can reuse this tape somewhat. You have to be kind of careful about reusing it because it sometimes it has moisture has crept under the edge. You don't want anything wet, <laughs> but I think I'm good. Yeah, S-T-I-C-K-E-L, and, and he really is a friend. We were in a, we've gone to several conferences together. Uh, we were in a gallery together for a number of years in uh, Cary, North Carolina. And uh, he just announced last week that, yes, he got accepted into the, for like the 10th time into the Splash um, publication, which is the, the best watercolor paintings of 2018 he's been in it so many times it's not even funny and if you go and look at his stuff you'll see now, if you follow me on a regular basis that you've heard me <clears throat> rag on uh realist super realist painters right that's not usually i'm saying bad things about <laughs> about super realist painters <laughs> But every t I want you to know, every time I say anything negative about super realistic painters, uh, the ghost of David Stickle, he's not dead yet, so it can't be his real ghost, his <laughs> the ghost of David Stickle um, haunts my, my mind and, and, and says things, oh yeah, smarty pants? <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> anyway, he's a really nice guy. B truly, very nice guy and a very good painter. And one of the things I do say about super realistic painting and there there are quite a few people in the country that do you know super realistic watercolor watercolor really among you know sort of oils but it really lends itself to i don't know if i want to say hyper realism but it really lends itself to realism and uh one of the complaints that i have about many uh 
watercolor realists, that is, those who are go pretty far down the road toward hyper-realism, is that they don't finish the job. They stop, you know, they stop like five yards from the finish line, if it's, if it's a marathon. They get almost, almost, almost hyper-realistic and then just start a little bit short. And I always want to send those kind of people, when I send those, when I see people like that, I want to say, uh-uh, don't do that. If you're going to give us hyper-realism, finish the course. Go all the way through. Give us, give it to us all the way. And I point to David Stickle's work and say, do like David Stickle. Don't stop just a little shy of hyper-realism. If you're going to get that close to hyper-realism, man, you, you're, I feel like you're bound. You're, you need to go all the way. And David Stickle does that. His work is, and it's more than just, it is way more than just hyper-realism. If you go look at his stuff, and I wish you would, and tell him Dan Nelson said, hi. Um, <laughs> um, it's very, very intelligent art. Very intelligent art. And uh, he calls himself artist of reflection. And if you go look at his stuff, you'll say, oh, <laughs> that's why he calls himself that. Uh, brilliant stuff. I can't meet it. Couldn't possibly meet a nicer guy in the whole world. And I'm proud to call him a friend. Um, he taught me, anyway, how did I get on to David Stickle? Because oh, he taught me this trick about using masking tape. And I'm sure a lot of watercolors know. I'm, I'm sure he's not the only one, but he's the one I happen to learn it from. So, again, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And uh, this is a good trick, eh? So look how, I've, I've just in the last few minutes, I've made all of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not sure I did this one yet, but I don't think I need to do that. I did, so seven pillars are, I made white. And uh, now I'm trying to decide what else do I, those, that tape, by the way, is used up. You see it's got little bits of red on it, so that means I don't dare use any more of that. Let's get some more clean stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to do, this is working so well, I'm going to do a little bit more of it. I'm going to do the railings. And by the way, I, all, of, all of this kind of stuff is completely uh, legal for uh, American Watercolor Society. AWS or International Watercolor Society. The, this this kind of stuff is totally acceptable in the in the traditional world of watercolor painting. I remember as a kid um, studying watercolor painting. I don't. Know, yeah, study. I guess that's a word. I was about 12 or 13 years old, and I remember, you know, my my initial actually getting a book and reading about it. We didn't have internet back then. I know you young people, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> but I remember reading a, you know, books about watercolor. And one of the authors back then, this would be 1967, 68, something like that, and he called, um, he called watercolor painting a bag of tricks medium. And that has always stuck with me, and it really is true, I, I think. I mean, every medium, in a sense, <clears throat> you could say is a bag of tricks, but no, not the way watercolors are. And, and again, all, all of you watercolors, you agree with me. You know what I'm saying. Um, you know, there are things you can do with every medium, but uh -uh, watercolor is a bag of tricks. There are just so many things you can do. You know, scratching, scraping, doing this, lifting out, um, salt, other, you know, salt and other mediums you just sprinkle on the painting, just all kinds of things. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a real, I think, uh, you know, a mad scientist's dream, so to speak. <laughs> um, if, you like, if you like just experimenting and messing around with stuff, then watercolor might be for you. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? Um, let me go back to my buddy David Stickle just for a minute. Um, and again, I do hope you'll look him up. Oh, let me, before I tell that story, let me tell you another story. So we were in the same gallery together, and it was a very, this was a unique gallery. Everybody in the gallery was friends. It was very, it wasn't exactly a co-op. We had a boss man, we had an owner, we had a, a, a boss, but, but we were all friends, so it was very different. Everybody in the gallery knew each other. Uh, it was a real community. It was delightful. It was called Waverly Artist Group. 
for anybody in North Carolina that ever visited. If you visited, you know it was unique. Anyway, um, and I used to <laughs> frequently, uh, being funny, I would point at David Stickle's work and I would say, um, yeah, I used to paint like that, pointing at his work. I said, I used to paint like that, and then I took pills and got over it. Ha, 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 joke, 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 funny, funny, right? Now, there was, there was a tiny grain of truth in that. That's The only reason it was sort of funny was because, in fact, my journey has gone from realism or hyper-realism to n not hyper-realistic, okay? Again, you regulars, you understand that. So there was a grain of truth in what I said. But anyway, one day I said that again. I pointed at his paintings. And of course, I was being facetious because I would never reached the, the skill level that, that David reached <laughs> in his realism. And again, please go visit David Stickle. Yeah, uh, you just Google him, you can find it. Anyway, one day, he, then <laughs> after I said that, he pointed at my paintings and he said, yeah, well, I used to paint like that. Of course, I was in sixth grade. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I think that is so funny. And again, because there was a tiny grain of truth. <laughs> anyway, he pointed at mine and said, I used to paint like that. Of course, I was in sixth grade. <laughs> I laughed so hard. And I said, David, don't ever stop saying that. That is just so hilarious. Anyway, but the thing I was going to say about David is he's the one who really introduced me to this Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and the fact that um, the fact that you can really get all the way back to white paper if, if you really need to if you really want to you can get all the way back to white paper and he showed me one of his paintings it was a, a country scene it was not one of his typical reflection it was just a sort of a typical watercolor scene uh, a horse and back, a wagon and a milk bucket or something like that. And he said, there used to be a horse. He pointed to a, a part of the painting. He said, there used to be a horse right here. I said, what? And he said, yeah, there used to be a horse here. And, and you know, it was an area about this big. And it was the horse's head, not the whole body, but it would have been a horse like this big up close. And he said, yeah, I took the whole thing up with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And... Man, that w that was news to me because I did I until then I had no idea that this particular tool could could really do that. All right, I'm done done with the magic eraser stuff. Um Oh, let me explain a little bit. Um before I start broadcasting, I did a little bit of experimentation trying to decide how I, how I wanted to do the white. Let me show you um, a couple of options. One is to, I always have several tubes of gouache, white gouache, which is opaque watercolor. And, and I, I can apply that with a brush. That's one way to do it. Another way is much less artsy. And it's, this is an office supply product. You understand? Like Office Depot, Staples, so on um and i decided i'm going to use this so i did a little bit right here in these windows just to see and i decided yep i think that's the look i want today just it's just the mood i'm in that's all there's no scientific reason for picking it over the other just that's just the mood i'm in all right now yesterday when we ended the broadcast i had just started um just started getting into the fountain pen. And for those of you who, if you want to use a fountain pen, let me show you a couple tips. One is have a tissue ready. So you can just grab it and blot it gently. And also this is a whole, this is not one post-it note, it's a stack of about five or six post-it notes. So that you can quote unquote train the, your, um, the pen to make sure it's functioning the way you want. And now let me talk to myself or talk to you while I talk to myself or vice versa. I don't know which it is. Let me point out to you the biggest mistake I could make 
Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. For those of you who weren't with me yesterday, explain my process, okay? This watercolor sketch, I did a, my first initial sketch was with a yellow watercolor pencil. Just the big major lines. Then I came back and did a second drawing with an orange watercolor pencils and I got more tight, more realistic, more accurate and so on. Then I did a third sketch with, uh, I don't know what color they call this, but it's a purple fuchsia. That's what you, you see a lot of that here. And at that point, I was done drawing. So I did light, medium, and dark. When you do orange, the yellow disappears. When you, I don't mean literally disappears, but mentally, psychologically, you don't notice the yellow anymore because the orange is so dark. And then, uh-oh, is the camera distorting again? Oh my goodness. Okay, tell you what, and by the way, I, <laughs> the last time I ordered one of these cameras, um, I, I ordered, um, Wow. Okay, I'm going to pause real briefly. I'm going to give the camera. news so it's still distorting let's see oh my goodness um the problem if is i don't think it's in the camera because the monitor on my control my phone is clear it's in the app it's in the app um okay and i'm not going to keep broadcasting well, let me type a few loose ends, <laughs> and then we're going to take a break. Um, so I started to say, uh, I'm going to talk to you while I talk to myself. Forgive the distortion. I'm going to stop in a minute. I'm going to uninstall and then reinstall the, uh, the app on my phone and see if that fixes it. Um, but the number one mistake at this point for me in this piece, this drawing, would be to say too much would be to do too much ink, too much detail, and too many, too many acres, too many square inches, and too, mu and too literal. So you can see, even during the quick break while I was drawing without you, um, you see this, this random, my, my hand had a little seizure, <laughs> just the way I do in my, in my, uh, oil painting I give my hand permission like that right there to have a little seizure without my permission so to speak in other words it's not it's not a deeply premeditated thing of, or it wouldn't work it has to it feels very spontaneous <laughs> that one right there I almost pre-planned it and and I'm not sure that it's quite as effective but it's good enough I'm not going to sweat over that So the, again, the number one mistake I think that I could make in this um, piece as it is right now would be to say too much, would be to draw too much, to do more um, ink than I need to do, and more accurate, more realism, too much realism, too many, too many details, uh, too fastidious. And, and too much area. I need to... Anyway, that's enough. So I'm going to... Wait. It's, now it's not... It's not distorted now, is it? What did it do? Did it just fix itself? Well, friends, I'm going to continue then. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on it. You feel free to yell. Let me know if it's distorting again.
So as you can see, I'm, I'm intentionally making marks that are not strictly um, accurate or realistic. And, and I certainly don't need to retrace. Yeah, it looks like it's doing all right. Yeah, gremlins, I, I agree. <laughs> Foxhole Willie. <laughs> uh, where do you live, Foxhole Willie? What part of the part of the world are you in? Truly, one of the f most fun parts about this broadcasting is chatting with people and finding out where they're from. Mark Toomey was on a little while ago. Welcome, Mark, if you're still with us. I think he gets the probably gets the travel award at the moment, but you never know. This uh, this uh, lettering here says St. David's. And once again, as you can tell by the way that I'm drawing it, the way I'm holding it, I'm resisting the temptation to get into penmanship mode, right? That would be a mistake to, because it would, would not be in keeping, would not be, be the wrong style. So I'm probably going to leave it. Marilyn, good to have you with us, Foxhole Willie. I have many little happy memories of Marilyn. As someone who's not from there, one of the happy surprises about Maryland is the, I think, is it the panhandle? I don't know what you call it, but the skinny part of Maryland. You know, not Baltimore. I mean, that's not a surprise. You, you kind of expect Baltimore. <laughs> if you're an American, you know anything about, you know, United States geography, big city. But um, the beautiful hill country of Maryland. And the other end of the state as well, the Del Marva Peninsula. My wife and I have uh, driven up to New York probably half a dozen times because I do a lot of wedding paintings in the New York area, New York, Connecticut, Long Island. And uh, more often than not, we, we choose, we elect to avoid Washington, D.C. and uh, go up the Delmarva Peninsula. I'm usually quite, quite happy that we did so. Beautiful part of the country. Old colonial history. Frostburg area. I would have to look that up. <laughs> I don't, I don't even, that sounds like a great, great name for a town. <laughs> okay, you can just see the the colonialists, the pioneers getting together. <laughs> so what are we going to call this place? <laughs> you can tell they met in the winter. <laughs> They're all blowing in their hands, and stomping their feet and trying to get the fire going. The horses bells are jangling outside. Frostburg. <laughs> Sorry, Foxhole Willie. <laughs> see me in a little bit while I'm doing this again so you the essence uh, man if, if you've watched my channel for any with any regular you've heard me say this you've heard me say the essence of good painting is making interesting marks and if I'm being more uh, fully uh, teaching in a more full er way I will say the essence of good painting and good drawing is making interesting. So there, right there. See that? I didn't exactly plan that. I didn't say, okay, 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 now I'm going to make a squish in a minute. Okay, go, do it. No, 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 no. It's just, it's split second. Um, because if you premeditate too much, it will come out, it will come out too contrived. Anyway, you can see by uh, this in particular, the way I'm doing um, these spindles, that I, I'm not trying to accurately replicate. I'm more interested in interesting marks than I am 
than I am accuracy. I'm interested in accuracy. Don't get me wrong. It's, if you were here yesterday, you saw me, you know, sweating over this. I actually had a literal, a, a literal vanishing point right here, and I was using a ruler, you know, to get all those lines right. So I, you bet, I want it. I want it accurate. I do. Do we have sound going okay? Lost, lost my monitor a little bit. Let's see. Not from there. It's a popular spot in the West Skinny Bit. Yeah, I bet. I'm sure I've been through there. Because that is that's one of the parts of Maryland I remember is the the Skinny Bit close to Pennsylvania. I'm a big fan of all of that. The Shenandoah Valley, which that that geographical um, well, I'll call it a slice, a gouge through the mid to eastern states that that is part of which is the Shenandoah. It's just an amazing leftover from the um, glacier age, I imagine. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful country. I remember the first time I went, speaking of which, the first time I went to the Shenandoah Valley about five or six years ago. Um, you know, it's got all these beautiful songs, <laughs> at least beautiful song <laughs> about it. And, uh, and you, you kind of wonder, so what's the big deal about the Shenandoah Valley? And when I got there, I, I went, oh, oh, <laughs> that's the big deal. <laughs> it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Going to crank down. So again, for those of you who are, maybe missed it, I, I have a stack of post-it notes here just to make sure the pen is still operating smoothly. Now here's what I have to be careful of, that I don't just, in a sense, put my head down and just keep drawing, 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 until this whole thing is drawn. If I do that, there's a very good possibility that I've drawn too much. So I need to put on the brakes here a little bit and say, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm getting close to, close to overdoing it. So let's, let's pause here. I'm going to add a bush that I didn't, I didn't have in the, in the earlier stage. Hey, let me take just a second and talk about drawing foliage. Am I saying that right? Foliage. Foliage. <laughs> I don't know if the I is pronounced or not. Just a, a real quick tip for pencil and pen and ink, you pencil and pen and ink people. Um, let, I'm going to draw a bush just sort of. So, and again, the way I'm holding the pen is better because this grip is your is your control or your death control grip. Okay, that's, that's very controlled. When you hold it this way, you're moving your whole arm and, and you're more, and you're freer. Okay, but let me start another bush. <laughs> Let's start one right here. I want to show you. So first of all, just a, as random a squiggly line as you can create. And then you go back the opposite direction and do another random squiggly line on top of that one. And then you come and do just a few dots inside that and a few dots as if leaves outside that. So the way I'm, the way I'm proceeding, let's see if I've got it. Yeah, I do. The way I'm seeing this right here is this is the bush. Okay, just to you understand which part's the bush, which part not. But just that, that one simple trick. I'll do it again. Um, a random squiggle going one direction, that is going this direction. And then the same randomness coming back the other way. And when you do it twice, you're much more likely to get a true random line. And then a few dots inside, a few dots outside. And again, this uh, the, the bush is represented by this shape right here. But that a real, just a simple trick, almost like a um, you know an architect, an architectural renderer, the kind of the kind of trick that uh, someone doing architectural renderings might do. 
um, it's good to know those tricks. Even if you don't want to do architectural rendering, it's good to know all the tricks that those guys or gals use because they are, they're handy sometimes. All right, back to the, the job at hand. So that's what I'm doing here, going one direction and coming back, going the other way. And then a few dots inside, a few dots outside. Just one way to, one way to skin the cat, shall we say? <laughs> Apologies to all you animal rights and vegans and stuff. <laughs> no, no hat, no, no, no cat was harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> it's just an expression. <laughs> All right, and then there's windows here. By the way, um, one of my mentor heroes in, in this genre, uh, what genre? Um, watercolor with pen and ink, and especially architectural renderings. One of my heroes and mentors, if you will, um, he's passed away now, tragically, much too young, but his name was Neil Watson. And if you just look up, I believe it's N-E-I-L, Neil Watson Art. Unfortunately, he died before the internet was huge, and so, tragically, people that die, <laughs> die before, you know, the internet is a big deal, it's a lot harder to find their stuff. But you can find him if you look. And if you look at, I mean, I... I still drool over his work. Um, he used to live in Raleigh. Uh, we used to be the part of be a, a part of the same arts group that got together on a monthly basis. And whoops, I got out of your frame there. And he was uh, very in inspirational uh, and and uh, influential on me about thirty years ago in that stage of my illustration career. Uh, He's the one, I, you, I quote him fairly often, he, he said, for every drawing mark that you make, and by that he meant realistic, accurate rendering drawing, for every drawing mark that you make, you should make an art mark. That's what he called um, uh, a non-realistic mark, an expressive, uh, creative, spontaneous, <laughs> like that. Um, he said, and of course, I think he was exaggerating when he said one, a one-to-one -one ratio. But the older I get, the more I find out, hmm, maybe he wasn't exaggerating. Maybe, <laughs> if, he, if he wasn't, I, I'm certainly not up to his level. But um, again, Neil Watson, look at his work. And, and you can see somebody that, in my opinion, does this, this kind of thing. Uh, much better than I do, but I still take his work as a as a jumping off in inspiration for my own work. Okay, now some grass. Remember, I'm, I'm saying to myself, I'm saying to you, I do not need to draw the entire thing. Right? That would be overkill and boring. So I'm trying to pull back on the reins, so to speak, and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. Don't get carried away. Don't do too much. You need, you, you can get by drawing less than you think. And I'm saying that to myself, and yet still, the number one mistake that I make is drawing too much. But let me show you a little bit about what I mean. I, um, over here in the house, this is not drawn. These windows are not drawn. Uh, I, I'm going to come in here and do just a little bit. Maybe that's all. That's all. Of course, it's very close to the edge. This is not drawn. That might be all I do there. This window. That's prob. And I might just leave that one just as it is, at least for now. And look down here. The this bush is almost not drawn at all. That I'm likely to leave that. This one is not drawn at the bottom. These two aren't, this one is not drawn at all in, in ink I'm talking about. So, again, that, that, that's, I'm glad you guys are watching me because you're helping. How's the camera doing? Oh, it is a little distorted, isn't it? 
just a little bit. Wow. Uh, I started to say a while ago, the last time I, this is my second Nevo camera, and when I ordered it, I, I did pay for the uh, extended service contract. So you can be sure I'm going to be contacting them and returning this or something, unless they can tell me what else. I'm, I'm going to be returning. So I, I really like the Mevo camera, but if I were to rate them at right now, I've been doing using it for two years, and I'm on my second camera, and the second camera shows signs of uh, not functioning terribly well. So my my uh, rating of the product, as you can hear, is somewhat in doubt. I, I couldn't give it a ten at the moment, or five if it's on a five. It has, seems to have some dependability issues. I like it. Well, as you can tell, I use it a lot, but it does, does seem to be susceptible to some just in case you're not able to hang in here with me. Um, let me tell you where I'm going from here. Um, I'm going to, so I'm doing the same thing, foliage. Went one way and I'm coming back the other way. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is some, some watercolor. The watercolor that, that I did initially was just, in a sense, blocking in the large areas. I'm gonna come in and do some more, some more careful watercolor and then finish up with um, opaque white and possibly some opaque color. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Like there, there are red roses. These bushes here are rose bushes. And um, they're red. I'm not sure how I'm going to try to capture that at this point. A couple different options. Don't know which one I'm going to do. doing right now as you can tell is definitely premeditated that is I'm, I'm thinking about these intentional art marks I mean to be careful not to do too many of them especially if they're premeditated because then they they could really appear contrived all right I'm gonna stop there that's enough ink how's my camera doing it is warped not terribly, right? It's basically got one warp in it. Um, <clears throat> and Julian asks, do you ever do a warm-up in going in on the second day straight with like ink? Um, no. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think I just went right into it. No, I did. I made sure my pen was working. I did. I did stuff like that. But no, I don't think I did. What would you would call any kind of warm up? Yes, I know the way I hold my pen. I and I advocate this pretty strongly. I I advocate, of course, holding a pen and a brush this way. Because when you do this, you eliminate the fingers. Now, I'm, of course, I I can hold it. For instance, okay, let, let's let's do. I'm, I did a bit of a shadow here, which means I'm obligated now to do the same thing. So now I am holding it in the traditional manner for for 
accurate detail work, right? So it's, you can go both ways, of course, but now see my fingers are moving and by because I'm holding the pen this way, you understand, I'm tapping into, I'm tapping into my penmanship brain. I'm going all the way back to second, first, second, and third grade where I learned how to control the pen. Okay, so when you hold a pen this way, remember, this is the part of your brain you're working in. And most of the time, those kind of lines are not artistic and pleasing. Um, so I, I eliminate, overcome that, that tendency by, yes, holding the pen and the brush, very much, even more so the brush, in this side saddle grip. Um, all right, I'm going to think for just a minute here. I said I was going to do uh, watercolor next. I'm actually going to change my mind a little bit. Instead, I'm going to do some some whiteout. Again, for those of you who just joined me, um, this is an office supply product. Um, I've been using it in art for maybe 30 years. The alternative would be to use uh, white gouache. And I can do both, of course, if I, if I so decide. One good thing about this is it's not a water product, so it does not reactivate or activate the um, watercolor pencil. Does that make sense? Whereas if I was using a water-based gouache, it would reactivate the pencil. And then, of course, I would just have to work with it. I would just have to make sure that the that bleedy process uh, did what I wanted. Now, it just so happens that today, let me make sure I'm getting pure pigment out of here, not just the solvent that's soaking into the paper. I'm not getting as much bang for my buck as I would like. So again, now this is what I'm doing now is strictly forbidden <laughs> in the watercolor world, right? Now you could, you, you, there's no way uh, that you could get again into open. I mean, watercolor society of America with opaque white, <laughs> much less <laughs> opaque white from a a whiteout pen. I've used many whiteout pens, by the way, and and firmly convinced that this is the best brand so you're welcome to experiment on your own but if you just want to take my experimentation as your own trust me and I'm squeezing the body of this to, to uh, influence the how much the the white ink the white paint is coming out and I was going to say again same thing uh, as, as with the pen and ink, um, too much of this would be a mistake. Overdrawing, I, I'll call it that. Overdrawing is just like overpainting. Uh, you know, how many people does it take to do a painting? Two, one to paint and one to shoot them, <laughs> or her, uh, before they think they're done. Because most of us, left to our own devices, we will overdo it. We'll overdo everything, most of us. That's a, a tendency that I'm working very hard to try to overcome. But that's looking pretty nice, don't you think? <laughs> now I'm begging for, don't you think? Come on, come on, come on. That looks nice, don't you think? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh boy. Okay, white stripes on the flag. <laughs> it's it's white, red, white, red, right? Right? <laughs> I've done I honestly I do have done so many American flags over the decades. I've actually done several broadcasts over the years about how to paint an American flag. It's really how to paint any striped fabric, whether it's a flag or, or anything else. 
but uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll leave that for now. I'm not going to give that lecture again right at the moment. This building that I'm drawing on right now is really supposed to be the star of the, the show, the, the star of the painting. In my, in my dialogue with the, the client whose son is graduating from this, you know, I was led to believe that this building is the chapel <coughs> and the students have many uh, significant and happy memories. Uh, in this building, so it, it's the one that that needs to get that that I want our eyes to go to the most. So yes, so I'm I'm drawing the most detail way back here. And even though this building is up close uh, and it's important, I'm going to try to resist you know drawing quite as much attention to it. So we'll see how that works out. I want our eyes to flow this way. You might be able to discern why I like this tool so much. Um, I, that's, I think it, it just it it has a certain look. It's a little bit um, blobby. Can I use that word? It's a little bit, you know, it's not as finessed as a brush and gouache. It, it leaves marks that are kind of yeah blobby. I'll say. Um, But uh, if you handle it the right way, I think I think it's a pleasant look. Again. More concerned that these marks be interesting. Accuracy is important, but the, pretty much the accurate part is done. Now the perspective issue is is taken care of. At this point, it's much more important that these that these white marks be entertaining, if I can use that unusual word. That the white marks themselves be interesting in and of themselves. Same thing, of course, that I do in my oil painting. Accurate, yes, but interesting trumps accuracy. Interesting is even more important than accuracy. Both are important. But if it came to one or the other, um, you know, Vincent van Gogh, van Gogh, <laughs> how, do they, how do they say it in Europe? Van Gogh. America is Vincent Van Gogh. Um, you know, taught us that over a hundred years ago. Accurate enough, you bet, but his marks are just unbelievable. I am going to come back and do a little bit more watercolor. I don't need to do much, as you can see. I, at least I hope you can see. Not much I need to do. Um, little bits here and there. You know what I might do? I can put white roses on these bushes. And if I decide to do so later, I will. I'll turn those uh, 
into red. Again, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm really pulling back on the reins. Uh, you know, hold your horses kind of thing. Um, don't draw, I'm saying to myself, don't do too much, don't do too much, don't do too much. Hold it back, hold it back. Try to understate. Understated is better than overstated. Ooh, I've never said that before. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to start quoting myself. Understated is better than overstated. Oh my goodness, you could, you know, that's one of those, you could you could put a brass plaque on the wall next to your easel, most of us could, that says, understated is better than overstated. At least a post-it note, <laughs> if, if not a brass plaque. <laughs> At least a post-it note. <laughs> understated is better than overstated. Never said that before. It just came out. All right, I'm done with the white for a while. Now, let's do some plain old-fashioned, and at this point, fairly simple. Thank you, Lu, Lu Yang. Yeah, Lu Yang, appreciate that. Appreciate your comment. All right, now, I've got, well, here's my, this is my small watercolor kit um, that I'm using. Um, and here's my brushes from a two inch, which I, I did all of this work yesterday with a two inch. Um, I'm very much given to flats. And I used, I wondered often if that was a real weakness that I like flats, prefer flats so much. But I was watching, I forget now who it was, um, Alvaro Castanet, Castanet, Alvaro Castanet, Castanet. Something like that is my favorite watercolor. So I don't think it was him. I would have remembered that. But it was somebody who was really good. And I noticed that they were using flats as well. And that encouraged me that, okay, maybe I'm not the only weird one. Um, well, let's start back here with this... Um, There you go. This is not my small watercolor tray, by the way. This is my largest watercolor tray. Um, but I was showing you that my the brushes are from my medium uh, medium size watercolor kit. All right, so. Let's start, I decided, with this building back here. Just a little bit of, no, no, all you watercolors, you know, that looks beautiful, just like that, doesn't it? But you know what's going to happen, don't you? It's going to dry lighter than that, and I'm going to go, oh, man, what happened to that nice, nice little contrast I had going there? So I'm going to go ahead and make it darker than I think it needs to be, because I know in watercolor, Virtually everything dries lighter. As it dries, it turns lighter. Leaving some little holes there. Just for artistic variety. And this is me being, being pretty fastidious, isn't it? Tongue painting, we could, we could call this. <laughs> I mean, just for a minute, because 
for those of you who, <laughs> who, who perhaps don't understand the term tongue painting, here it is. Hold, first of all, holding a brush like this. <laughs> Whoops. I'm sorry, I was off camera. <laughs> That's. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get it yet. This is tongue painting. <laughs> Got it. That's that's what that's what I mean by that. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's this is what I'm doing right now. It's pretty pretty close to tongue painting. Darkening again a little bit. That might be enough on that little thing back there. While I've got some uh, dark brick red on my brush, though, let's go ahead and and do this part of this building up here is is brick. Uh, one of the overarching principles that I would that I'll share with you uh, when it comes to pen and ink and watercolor. And I, I mentioned this yesterday. Most people, I think, most people would assume that you do all the line work first and then come back and do the color. You know, you draw the lines, then you color in the lines. Um, and I, for that very reason, I think that's probably not the best way to do it. Instead, it's better to go back and forth, which is what you see me doing here. So I did watercolor, then I did ink, and then watercolor again. And then I'll probably do some ink and maybe go back and forth a few times again without <laughs> hopefully not overdoing it. Um, and in this case, I actually did the white early. Usually the, the white is done very late in the process. I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, dark windows. So I'm mixing up the dark, dirty violet, dirty purple, blue. bit of dirty violet worked very nicely up there, I think. I have a drawing mistake here. In fact, let me go ahead and fix it so that I don't forget. This is a, the wall of this building doesn't start till here. And um, so all of that back there is supposed to be the roof of this distant building. I think I'll go ahead and paint that to slightly greenish color so I don't forget again. Oh, it's too dark. It's too easy fix. Let's put it down dark and then blot it up.
part of the reason for going back and forth between um, pen and ink and watercolor is that you you interplay you, you can make you tend to be more interesting in in the way you handle the paint and the ink if you go back and forth like right at the moment I'm with the painting of course I'm responding quite a bit to the ink lines uh, but the ink lines were already a response to the paint and vice versa and so on I'll continue that I think that's just about enough Let's do a shadow going back this way and a shadow right here. Yeah. There's a shadow up here, but not as intense as the some of those others. I think that I think the architecture of of this building is reading fairly clear, fairly well. You, I think people can tell what's going on. Um, without being too detailed, without getting into too much explanation, so that it's rather soft, and our our eyes, I hope, are going back again to uh, the chapel in the background. Now let's do some shadows on the roof here. Again, quite a bit of tongue painting. You see the way I'm holding the brush. There's a time and a place for everything. And this is a time for, in my opinion, pretty careful control but it's also a warning anytime you're painting in this what I typically call over, overly fastidious manner and you better be aware and say wait a minute okay am, am I doing too much <laughs> over fastidiousness <laughs> always making up words up a line there with white and then I changed my mind I wish that I hadn't so bringing it back in a couple little birds right down here just for fun could could be a cliche of course <laughs> I feel like you keep it really subtle it's not as likely to be a cliche Yes, this you're you're exactly right. Who said uh, yeah, Lu Yang? Lu Yang. Yes, less is more. You know, I I I kind of pick on that phrase sometimes because people spout it off as though it was it's the like gospel truth. It's an ironic truth as long as you understand. Yes, this is what I'm saying. A lot of what I'm saying here today is is that that ironic truth holding back is is so important. It's so hard to do. You have to keep thinking is, is the thing. And if you stop thinking and just keep drawing, which is what realists, all, that's all realists have to do is they don't have to think. They just draw. <laughs> Woo! I told you I usually pick on realists. And the ghost of David Stickle is haunting me even as I say that. And that description does not apply to him, by the way. Uh, again, I, encur I really encourage you to go look at that. Um. Um, all right, let's. I want. I want to do some. Some green on these these trees back here. Without getting carried away, so keep it keep it light. Um, less is more. <laughs> Does apply. Uh,
Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to finish right now because, uh, I'm leaving here shortly to head back downtown to paint on my mural. I will be doing another broadcast today um, back downtown outdoors as the sun goes down. Uh, I'll be doing a broadcast, but I'll, I'll do a little bit, just a little bit more. And the, the this flag seems like a really good place to... You know, let's get this nailed down. Years ago, I heard a, a, a watercolor painter. It could have been any medium, but it happened. To, it was Tom Jones, I think. You can look him up. Good buddy. Um, in one of his expressions, he was teaching... In fact, he was making a video as I was watching him uh, just standing in the studio, and I think it was, and he used the expression, the paint is smarter than you are. And I, that was that's a great line. The paint is smarter than you are, so let the paint be paint. And the, uh, the brushes are smarter than you are, so let the brushes be brushes. <laughs> now, I recognize it. Expressions like that are sort of, you know, kind of art- Artist metaphysical, <laughs> uh, what's what, folklore almost, you know, to say things. What, what, what exactly do we mean? But it's a good way to understand that the process of, um, of painting. Let the paint be paint. Let the paint surprise you. Uh, Bob Ross's best line by far uh, was happy little accidents. That was a great description of good painting. Right now, by the way, I'm just coming in and doing some, some broken color with some phthalo blue in there. And I should do more of that broken color here and there. Broken color is something that I've matured in in the last couple of years, in maybe even the last year, in my oil painting. And uh, it's it's something that I can I could catch up in my watercolor a little bit and say, wait a minute. I've learned, I've come to a deeper understanding of this concept of broken color. I can incorporate it into my watercolor. I'm going to do some shadows of these bushes right here. It dawned on me when I was doing that. It's like, wait a minute, these shadows need to be rounded. So, and while I'm talking about the shadows, Let's do some let's do some serious shadow of the building on the grass here. And maybe I'll maybe I'll finish this broadcast pretty pretty soon here. Let's just do some major dark. Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Now now I've got some dirty Dirty green on my brushes. I'm feeling that the the shadow side of this whole building. Let me look at the photograph again. Yeah. didn't know it was going to go this dark, but now I'm feeling like it's appropriate. Okay, hang on just a second before that dries. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Right? Bag of tricks, watercolor. Put it down and blot it out. Generally, I think that was a good a good decision. I am going to um, do some more uh, watercolor and some more ink and some more white before I'm all finished. So I'm not finished yet. There we go. There we go. So here, in some areas, as you can see, I'm doing 
I'm doing watercolor on top of the whiteout. So it's no longer white, but it, it's coming out now coming to a right. Line. Oh, that is so much better. Whew. Glad I did that. So let me give you the, the overall picture there. Um, that that is a that is considerable that this all went darker and now our eye really goes there that was a that was a good intuitive move for for several minutes there i wasn't sure i was doing the right thing but now now that it's now that i've got it done i'm go oh yeah that was the right thing and i'm again darkening this even more and now that I've done that, I can see that I could stand to have just a little bit, not much, a little bit more ink in here. A little bit more black. Black ink. Aha. And I also want this darker. So that our eye comes back in this way and doesn't go so to speak, flying off the page up this way. I, I gotta stop now, but that's good. Um, I will pro and again, I'm running out of time, so I don't have the time to do it right now, but I will probably mix up with, with gouache uh, an opaque, pale, sky blue, this color here, and come in and do just a little bit of sky in here, maybe with some reflection on some of these windows. Um, I don't want to do do that right now. I, f I feel like I'm uh, I, I, I'll be better. I'm, I'm I'd be better off coming back and looking at this entire painting with fresh eyes tomorrow. Um, but. I'm, uh, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm quite happy with the turn that this took just in the last 10 minutes. And I still don't know if I'm going to do um, white roses down here or red ones. Um, I am a little concerned that red might draw just a little bit too much attention. I can do a couple stars up here though. There you go. All right, that's probably a good place to stop. And for any of you, if you have time, uh, I hope to be broadcasting again probably in another hour and a half from downtown or a very, very, very different project. By the way, the, the mural that I'm doing downtown is uh, is going to be all acrylic. So that'll be a fun, a fun exercise. I don't do very many paintings uh, in pure acrylics because most of mine I finish in oil. But this is an outdoor, you don't do oil outdoors, at least in our part of the world. Um, and, and oil painting would be devoured by uh, mildew. So uh, in our part of the world, uh, um, acrylic is, is the way to go for outdoors. So that will be fun. I, I can't do an awful lot tonight because I don't have the, the perfect medium has not arrived in the mail to be coming tomorrow morning. Uh, but I can do some, and uh, I hope some of you can join me there. Oh, distortion happening again. I'm so sorry, Foxhole Willie. Thank you for letting me know about that. And Liu Yang says, The color of the shadow is so difficult to control. They always make my drawing look so dirty. Um, oh, <laughs> so some of you guys are. Let me back up. Some of you are saying something funny here. Let me let me change the camera here. <laughs> you can look at my lovely face while I read your lovely comments. <laughs> Susan, I'm one of my regulars. Thank you, Susan. You are unwillingly have become my painting buddy, <laughs> or unwittingly, perhaps. <laughs> I'm willing. <laughs> Glad to be your buddy, Susan. I put you on YouTube when I'm painting and I feel like I have company and sometimes what you're saying is directly related to the current painting. <laughs> that is so fun. Makes my day. Thank you, Susan. Uh, and Abdullah says, yeah, we don't make mistakes, only happy accidents. Correct. Should have said unknowingly. Yeah, correct. Um, that's right. Unwittingly, I said. Very good. Um, um, 
very good. And sorry about the distortion. That is irritating, I must say. Look at my face. I can do some really weird things with this distortion. Is it making me better looking? <laughs> very possible. <laughs> it's kind of like a funhouse mirror effect. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> well, I'm happy with the way it's looking. I've got a couple more layers. And maybe I'll let you watch me do this. My soil. Sorry while I scratch my itchy nose. All the things you should not do on international broadcast. <laughs> right. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you like it, thumbs up. Uh, share it with your artistic friends. Don't tell them about the distorted camera. That's just our little secret. <laughs> tell them, no, he really does look like that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mott.